Hello everyone, my name is Sean Hendricks and in this video I'm just going to take you through a little trick. Uh, it's not a particularly unusual or awesome thing in and of itself, but I really wanted to show off a technique inside of 3ds Max that a lot of people don't know exists or have forgotten about. And here we're going to build this thing that you're seeing on my screen now. It's kind of a motion graphic-y kind of uh, experience with some simple primitives. Uh, and it all interacts real time in the viewport and I can easily animate it. And to do this, we're going to use a helper object called Expose Transform. Now, a lot of people have completely forgotten about the existence of this particular thing. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I brought it back up to the surface and let people know that they should really play with it. There's a lot of different things you can do. So I'm just going to delete everything here and start again. And I'm going to start by creating a simple uh, box object. So we'll go in here, make a box. It looks like this time we'll be purple and also go to the helpers and you'll see we have a helper here called expose TM or expose transform so I'll pick on that and we'll just create that helper and I will line it up to the box XYZ and say okay so it's there and I'll also link it up to the box just so we have it attached so at this point now if I click on the expose transform and go to the modify panel we can see what this is and all this really was was a helper that was built specifically to expose uh, information about the transform of an object. Uh, main reason for this was there are a lot of people out there that just want quick access to this data and they don't want to write scripts with special you know commands in them to get to it. Uh, they really just want I just need the X rotation of that object so I can drive something else. So this is one way that you can get that information. Now in order to do this a lot of these values that are assigned to a transform are in relation to something. You can't tell an ob tell how many degrees an object is rotated on X unless you know in relation to what. If it's in relation to the world, it's fairly simple, uh, but it could be in relation to another object, it could be in relation to its parent, it could be in relation to a number of different things. So you need to know that information. So up here we can say, well, I want to expose the information for this box. And instead of using the parent of that box, because this was originally built specifically for riggers, so more often than not you were getting the data in relation to the parent of your object. But in this case we'll turn parent off, say I want it in relation to, say, this dummy object right here. And that dummy object, I've got a simple animation on it right now, so you can see, if you look at the local position that's being exposed for this box, so in the transform helper it's exposing the local position, even though that box isn't moving, its local position is changing because it's in relation to the dummy object that I've got moving in the scene. We also have in this system an ability to adjust which order, which order the Euler rotations are being calculated in. Uh, we can strip out non-uniform scales. Uh, one that I find useful at times is the timing offset. So you can say, give me the data from, say, the X position world for this object, but with a 10 frame offset. So it's 10 frames in the future, something like that. So we got all of those things, but there's also a number of things like uh, distance to reference. You also have uh, bounding box sizes, things like that. In this case, I want the distance to the reference. So what I'm going to do is we're going to grab onto this box, and I'm going to go to animation, and we're going to pick wire parameters. And I'm going to go into the boxes settings and say I want to wire the height to that exposed transform and I'm going to wire it to and here you can see all the different channels that are in the exposed transform dialog I'm going to wire it to the distance and so it's the exposed transform driving the box so we'll click the arrow in that direction and I'll hit connect so we very simply have an expression here that says the box height is equal to the distance so now and I'll just move this a little out of the way so you can see now as that dummy object moves it controls the box and of course if I go in here and just grab the dummy object it does it in real time. What's nice as well is of course I can add any kind of uh, math to this I want. We'll just do a simple divide by two just so the box doesn't go quite so high. And once you've got that you can close that window down, select the whole thing and we're gonna make 10 and we're making uh, objects as a copy and we'll just instance the controllers and say OK. And at this point now again if I grab onto this box now I've suddenly got what could be very much an audio peaking meter or something like that. Uh, and if I select them all again one more time and just move it out a little bit this way and do another 10. We've now got the entire set 
and again I can grab onto that dummy object and you can see it immediately starts updating what I'm doing. So very powerful tool that a lot of people just forgot is in the system. So if you look at what I'm doing now, think of this, uh, if you think of a lot of kind of build-up animation, architectural animations, you'll have things like flipping tiles in local areas and stuff like that. Well, this could easily be set to drive rotations. So you could actually, as this gets close to something, rotates an object, and you could have hundreds of them, they all rotate, so you see it flipping around. Uh, things like that can be pretty easily done with this system. So it's just a handy tool to look at, thought I'd uh, share it with everyone and uh, I look forward to hearing uh, any experiments any you come up with for it.